I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'm going to be reviewing Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Is there anybody who has read this book and not liked it? Seriously, I feel like the whole planet loves this book. Like, I took it to school one day and immediately one of my friends was like, dude, that book is so good. And then later in the day I went to math class and this guy came up to me and he was like, oh my god, I love that book. It's one of my favorites. I read it eight times. Well, now I'm on my ninth. What? That is insane! I've wanted to read this book ever since Priscilla from The Readables made a review for it. And now that I've read it, I can see why everyone likes this book. Ready Player One is so much fun. It's seriously just like going on an adventure. Ready Player One is exciting and entertaining. It has a great cast of characters. It's very imaginative and creative. It has some humor. It has some romance. I feel like it has a little bit of everything. But mainly, it's a huge nod to 80s pop culture. For those who don't know, Ready Player One is set in the year 2044, where human civilization is rapidly declining and people like to escape reality and enter a virtual one called Oasis. Oasis was created by a man named James Halliday, and when he died, Halliday put this kind of lottery game inside Oasis, where the users can find three keys and go through all these difficult trials, and the first person to win wins his inheritance. The thing about this game is that everything is centered around 80s pop culture, which is something Halliday was obsessed with. And so all the clues, all the tricks, all the games revolve around movies, games, shows, music from the 80s. And for years, Oasis users have been searching for the first key, but it's been fruitless until our main character, Wade Watts, finds the first key. And from there on out, the competition is so heated, and Wade realizes he might not be playing just for money, but also for his life. This review will be spoiler free, so let's dive right into it. You don't need to know anything about video games or 80s pop culture to enjoy this book, because I know nothing about that stuff, and I thought this book was pretty freaking great. Ernest Klein does a really good job of explaining all the clues and how they tie into their corresponding 80s pop culture references, just in case the reader doesn't understand it. I can't imagine how much more fun this book would have been if I went into it knowing like everything about 80s pop culture, if I knew all the references, if I understood all the movies and shows and music mentioned in this book. Like if I knew all that stuff, I could have played alongside Wade. You know, guessing at these clues, trying to crack the code, just as he was, and I think that would have been the coolest thing ever. But unfortunately, I don't know anything about that stuff. But that wasn't a problem. The first few chapters of Ready Player One are basically all world building, setting up the story and its history, showing the futuristic world of 2044, as well as establishing the Oasis. I would say that it's a lot, a lot of exposition, and if I'm being honest, I do think that it was a little bit of an info dump. It was just a whole lot of information crammed into a few chapters, and it was slightly dull. I think that might have been because of Ernest Cline's writing, because as I was reading, I found that Ernest Cline does a lot of telling versus showing. But despite that, I thought Ernest Cline did a really, really awesome job with his world building and creating the world of Oasis. It was so clear and understandable, and there was so much imagination and creativity that went into it, and there were like little details and quirks in the Oasis that just made it really interesting. Once you get through all that exposition, and once Wade finds the first key, the plot just takes off. The challenges were so entertaining and really, really cool. I loved reading about them. And what I really, really loved about the plot is that Ernest Cline doesn't leave any of his plot lines dangling. If he mentions a device or points something out during a scene, you can bet your money that it is relevant and that he will tie it into the plot later in the book. And that might take a really long time, and you might be left wondering, um, did Ernest Klein just mention this detail and forget about it? Because, like, that's what I thought a couple of times while I was reading. But by the end of the book, 
he'll have it wrapped nicely into the plot, and I think that's really cool. The cast of Ready Player One is extremely diverse and so, so much fun. Wade is a fantastic main character, and I really, really loved his friendship with his best friend H because it felt really genuine, and I also enjoyed reading about his relationship with Artemis. And the great thing about the cast is that you only know them by their avatars, and so you don't really know who they are, what they're like in real life. So I love how each character kind of had their own backstory and their own hidden secrets that they wouldn't reveal on Oasis. And when H, especially, when H was revealed, it was the best thing. It was the best thing ever. As you can tell, overall, I really, really enjoyed Ready Player One. I thought it was extremely entertaining, so exciting. I thought it was just so much fun. And I think it has so many great different aspects in the book that it can appeal to anybody. If you've read Ready Player One, definitely let me know what you thought, and if you haven't read it, I'd really recommend it. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and happy reading! Goodbye! Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'm going to be reviewing Ready Player- This is the wrong side of the